Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back. So in the last video, we set up the visual effects for our batteries to spawn like an electricity particle shooting out to our player, showing that it's giving the player charge. Now we want to add a UI element to the screen to allow the player to see the current amount of power that he has versus the current amount of power that he needs to actually win the game. So we need to do a couple of things and we're just going to get those things set up. First, we need to go ahead and navigate to our game mode, which is our battery collector game mode. And in here, up, oh, whoops, right here, we're going to set a few variables in our protective section here. So I'm going to copy this specifier here and we need a couple of variables so we need a float that returns the amount of power that we need to win we also need to go ahead and set up a multiplier so that we can multiply our base or initial power times this multiplier so that we can, if we wanted to raise the level up of how much power you needed, and this multiplier will act as like our difficulty. So let's go ahead and say float. And this is our power to win multiplier. And now we need a public function that we can call from our widget when we create it that will allow us to get this power amount to win. So this is going to be a U function. It's going to be blueprint pure since it's only going to return a value. And we want to say float get power amount to win. And this is going to be const because it's not going to change the power amount variable at all. It's just going to be a read only variable. I, I probably haven't explained what const is, but if you come from unity and you're messing around with programming, you, you understand that const is a read only variable, meaning you're not going to create a float variable and then say, Okay, that float variable is equal to itself times 10. Like that automatically makes it not constant anymore. If you write to the variable at all, it's you can't have it const. Uh, constant means that it's not going to change. So let's go ahead and implement this function here, alt enter. And I want to go ahead and return our amount to win. And one thing that we can't do, we can't set this power amount to win in the constructor because this is based off of our initial power in our character in our multiplier. So what we can do here is go ahead and set our multiplier. Power to win multiplier is equal to 1.5. And that way in this begin play, we can go ahead and start taking advantage of this multiplier here. So let's go ahead and get our character how we did here. So let's copy this line here. And we can really copy this entire, we can really copy this entire piece of code here. And in begin play, we want to do the same code here. We want to, we want to, get our player reference by using our U gameplay statics library that has that get player pawn function in it. And it's going to return our player character. Then we want to check if our player character is valid. We don't care about his power level. We just want to check if our player character is valid. And then if he is valid, we want to go ahead and set our power amount to win equal to our player character, we got to get his base 
power level. And then we're going to multiply that times that power to win multiplier. Whoops, our power to win multiplier. So this will set our power to amount to win equal to our base power level times that power to win multiplier. And we'll return that value here to our widget using this get power amount to win function. And now we need to go ahead and set up in C++ what we need to be able to create and actually make a widget in C++. You can't just create a widget in C++ without doing some borderline or some baseline code here. So you got to come and navigate to your source file inside the battery collector folder and go to this build.cs file. And this is a C sharp file. So you guys might feel right at home. And inside of this file in our publicly dependent public dependency module names, we need to go ahead and include UMG. And this type of stuff here can only be explained. And you see it's giving me an error uh, because I don't have a comma here. Basically what this is, is this including different modules that are already a part of the engine or a part of plugins that you added in the engine. So if I had a plugin and I wanted to access its code in C++, I would have to include that module name and it's just an F name to the module. If I navigate to the engine and go to plugins, I don't actually know where the UMG plugin is. So I'm going to go ahead and search it just so I can figure it out. UMG. We got 30 hits. So let's try to find it here. Let's just go through UMG editor. What else we got? That's all UMG editor there. Okay, here we got this UMG. And it's now going to include and compile this folder into our C++ code so that we can access uh, functions and variables via C++ so our IntelliSense knows what's going on as well. We also need to go ahead and include another statement here. So our privacy, our private dependency module names dot add range. We need to go ahead and say new, just how it is here. And it's a new string. And we need to include both slate and late core. And make sure that these are in quotations. So UMG works one in one with slate. Uh, it, it's actually written in slate. So in order to use UMG, we have to include these two modules as well. And I'm actually not sure if you have to inside of uh, newer versions of the engine, but since the tutorial went this route, I'll be doing the same thing. Now with these things included, it would be best to go ahead and compile, but I know that that's gonna take a, a long time because of this Unreal Engine 5 bug. So what I'm gonna do is just close all of this and I'm gonna go back to that game mode file, uh, game mode header file and we need to go ahead and create two more variables in our public section so copy this and paste it here and this type here is going to be something that seems awkward and it's very rare to use it and I believe we have used it already but just to reiterate and go over what it is again, it's T subclass of. Now what T subclass of is it only allows us to use a certain class based off of what we pass in. So if we passed in a actor, right? As our T subclass of, we'd only be able to use actor classes uh, when we are setting this variable here. And it works that way for any type of variable. 
So whatever variable we set here, we can only use child or inherited classes of that type of variable. So what we want to pass in here is class u user and widget. And this is our UI class here. You see, this is the user widget is extendable by users through the widget blueprint, which is the widget blueprint that we're going to create in our next tutorial. So we, we're going to use a T subclass of U user widget, and we're going to call this our main HUD class. And then we're going to go ahead and create a another protected variable that is a, a just an instance of this class, one that we could kind of modify, we could create, we can de destroy and always have a reference to it. So it's also a class U user widget. And this is going to be a pointer. And this is going to be uh, called our active widget. So this will will set a, a widget class here and then we'll cache it into this variable here that's called active widget. That way we can mess with it in C++. If you hover over this in Rider, it'll say object member active widget can be garbage collected at any time. And that's because it's not a U property. So it's not handled by Unreal's garbage collection. It is handled by C++ garbage collection. So we want this to be a part of Unreal's garbage collection. So we just need to give it a U property and that'll go ahead and solve that little error for us or warning. So now if we go to our source file here, we can go ahead and create this widget. And we want to do that in our begin play as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop down underneath here and say, if our, if our main HUD class is valid, then we want to go ahead and set our active widget equal to a created widget. So a call that we can call is called create widget. And you see it's declared in the user widget.h. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And here we have to pass it a type. And I want to pass it the u user widget. And Inside of here, we need to go ahead and give it the class that we're going to create, which is the T subclass of, and that's the uh, main user widget that we, or main HUD class that we just declared. And we need to go ahead and give it the owning object. So we need to say get world because the world will own this object. And now this should all function properly. And I'm gonna go ahead and build, but I'm gonna build the smart way. I'm gonna come over here to games. I'm gonna right click on battery collector and I'm going to build selected projects. And hopefully that'll build a little bit faster than doing this here. I think that's a bug. Okay, so we gotta, we gotta compile here. You can see that it took 285 seconds. That, my friends, don't be afraid of that, okay? That I'm telling you that is only Unreal Engine 5 right now because I have a 32 core processor. In Unreal Engine 4, I would have compiled this in like 30 seconds, maybe less. Um, so just don't let this discern you from using the engine. I know these compile times are high. Just, you know, get on Instagram, take a little break, go get a snack, go get a you know, take a sip of water and come right back and get back into it. And hopefully it doesn't make you lose your track of mind or your mind track or wherever you were when you were coding. But as you see, we got a successful build. So in the next video, we're going to actually create these UI elements and plug them into our game mode so that we can actually see our power level as it increases on the UI screen. So if you're ready for that, go ahead and join me in the next video and I'll see you guys in there.
Peace.